Now let's have a look at this question from elastic recovery and permanent set topic. The question says that a component having a length of 1 meter, so this is the length of it, 1 meter, it was tensile loaded beyond elastic limit. It's an important keyword that it is loaded beyond elastic limit. At a point when its length increased by 3 mm, it was experiencing a stress of 250 megapascal when its length increased by 3 mm because we are tensile loading it, its length is obviously going to increase. If the Young's modulus of the material is 300 gigapascal, then find the dimension, final dimension of the component after unloading in mm. This is the question that we have. Look, whenever you get a question upon loading, no matter from what unit or what topic it is, always try to visualize whether the load is going to, uh, you know, enter the component into the plastic zone or not. There have been such good questions where students, you know, they just take it for granted that it is going to be in the elastic zone and they start the calculation. Don't do that. Always try to fully analyze the situation whether the load applied has made the deformation, uh, you know, beyond the elastic limit into the plastic zone or it is still in the elastic zone. It's very important. There are certain good questions which can trap you here. So in this question, that's not the case because question has directly told you, directly told you that it is loaded beyond the elastic limit means it is entering into the plastic zone. So the deformation is now plastic. So when you unload it from the plastic zone, it is not going to retain or regain its original dimension. So the original or the final dimension after unloading cannot be 1000 mm because question here gives the length in meter or 1000 mm. So final dimension will not be 1000 mm definitely. It will be more than 1000 mm, right? Because there will be some permanent set coming into this material. There will be some permanent deformation of the material. Now, since we know the basics of permanent set and elastic recovery. So I am not going to explain those terminologies here. You can refer to your course for that. But we obviously are going to consider those two situations to understand what exactly is happening and what will be the final dimension of this component. So this is loaded beyond the yield point. All right. And after a certain point, after reaching a certain point, it was unloaded. And we know whenever such unloading occurs, after entering into the plastic zone, it follows the same slope as the slope of Young's modulus. So it will come back with the same slope like this. Right? This slope is same as the slope in the elastic zone, which is the Young's modulus, which is given to us. Now let's name some points. This is O. This is A. This is B. Let's draw one perpendicular line from here. This is C and this is perpendicular to it, correct? This was loading and this is unloading. So when you loaded it up to point A, where the value of stress was 250 mm, sorry, 250 megapascal and its deformation was 3 mm, right? Not strain, deformation was 3 mm. And then you unloaded it, it will come back through this path at B. B is the point or OB is the length which tells the permanent strain into that material. The strain BC has been recovered. In reality, it was loaded up to A where strain was denoted by point C or by length OC. But upon unloading, the elastic recovery occurred and it regained uh, some of its original dimension but not complete dimension. So it will not come back at O after the elastic zone, but it will come back to some point following the same slope at point B. That is what we know about it. And OB is the permanent deformation or permanent set into this component after loading and unloading beyond elastic limit, right? Now I have done a slight change in the value of the equation to simplify the calculation for you. So the value of Young's modulus has been made 200 in place of 300. Process can be applied for any value of Young's modulus just to make the calculations easier for you to understand. I have taken, I have changed this value of 300 to 200. Now, coming to the question, it is asking you the final dimension. Now, there are two approach in which you can find out the final dimension. The approach one is 
that the final dimension is equal to initial dimension plus how much permanent set came into it which is the deformation of AB the strain of sorry of OB the deformation of OB will be corresponding to strain of OB the deformation of BC will be corresponding to strain of BC right so how much was the permanent set how much was the permanent deformation if you add it to the initial length you will get the final dimension this is one approach and what is the other approach in the other approach what you can do in the approach number two in the approach number two you can calculate the final dimension as the deformed dimension which was up to 1003 mm the final dimension before unloading so let's write it as final dimension dash dash represents before unloading minus how much was elastic recovery how much was elastic recovery and elastic recovery is deformation corresponding to BC these are the two ways to approach the same question whichever you find it easy you can go for it I am going to explain both of them and there is also one silly mistake possible in this approach which I will address when I will be teaching that approach so in the approach one what we can do you simply put the values initial length is 1000 mm which was 1 meter how much is the deformation of uh, OB how you can know that if you know the strain of OB how you can know the strain of OB the strain of OB or let me do it with a different color here the strain of OB is equal to the strain of OC minus strain of BC strain of OB this is equal to strain of OC minus strain of BC correct how much is the strain of OC how much is the total deformation total deformation was 1000 was 3 mm before unloading so 3 mm divided by initial dimension of 1000 this is going to give you total strain before unloading at point A minus how much has been recovered how much of strain has been recovered that you put you subtract you will get strain of O B now how do you calculate the value of epsilon B C look this is simple geometry if you look at this triangle A C B it's a right triangle right and in this triangle also the slope of AB as I told you is same as the slope of elastic zone in the loading curve this is the loading curve from O to A and in the loading curve the slope in elastic zone is always equal to Young's modulus which is 200 gigapascal which means that slope of AB is also equal to 200 gigapascal and slope is equal to slope of 200 gigapascal is equal to AC divided by BC right basics of mathematics notice that slope of 200 gigapascal has been converted to megapascal by multiplying it with 1000 which is also a quite probable mistake that some of the students can make so it's 200 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 3 the value of AC is it known to you yes AC represents the value of stress at point A which is given as 250 megapascal so it is 250 here divided by BC both are in megapascal numerators so units uh, will get cancelled you don't have to bother about that so BC will be equal to 250 divided by 200 multiplied by 10 raised to the power minus 3 0 0.00125 that is your value of BC which is nothing but strain BC right so this is the value that is known to you and if you subtract them which is 0 0.003 minus 0 0.00125 you will get this is the strain of OB right how much will be the elongation corresponding to this strain you simply have to multiply this strain with the dimension 1000 correct and if you simplify that what you will get this is 1000 this is 1000 plus this multiplied by 1000 1 2 3 will be 1.75 this is nothing but 1001.75 mm is the answer again if we solved it using the initial value of 300 we would have got a different answer obviously only change would have been here in place of 2 3 will be coming so this strain will change 
this strain will change and this value will change so this answer will change right so to make it simpler i change the value everything you can follow using whatever value of this uh, uh, young's modulus we were using earlier now coming back to the second approach and let's see whether from second approach we get the same answer or not or what possible mistakes are there in the second approach so look in the second approach the final length is calculated by the length final length before unloading minus elastic recovery which is del bc correct final length before unloading was 1003 del bc is equal to strain of bc multiplied by length which is 1000 initial length initial original length 1000 i will talk about it in two minutes i will talk about it that what should be the value of l and if you solve it you will get the same answer look the value that we are choosing here is extremely important because you are coming back from the dimension of 1003 and some of us may think that we have to take the final dimension of 1003 here because strain is happening in 1003 this some of you may think mainly because this unloading looks like a separate case to us right if you look at the diagram it feels that ab is a separate case we have loaded it and now we are unloading it so unloading case looks like a separate case than the loading case okay but when stress strain graph stress strain curve is considered again i would like to remind you about the basics that i have taught you that stress strain diagram is based upon the original dimension of the body upon the initial dimension because we are dealing with engineering stress strain diagram not with the true stress strain diagram so here stress is equal to p by a naught means initial area strain in this line is equal to delta l by l naught initial length so whatever value of strain you are using in calculation anywhere there it will be multiplied by original dimensions to calculate the value of deformation the value of strain of bc that we are using it may be uh, you know used for unloading right for this movement from a to b where initial dimension for this movement is the dimension of a but you will not multiply it with the dimension of a dimension at a you will still multiply it with the l naught the initial length because whatever calculation or whatever value of strain we are use, using we are picking directly from this curve that will always be multiplied by original dimensions to get the corresponding values because that is the basics of engineering stress strain diagram all right so if you continue in this manner what you will get 1003 minus strain of bc is this you multiply that with 1000 the decimal will be at 1.25 and if you do that you will get the answer as 1001.75 mm again so the final answer for this question is 1001.75 mm both the approaches i have told you it may be possible that may be possible that a graphical question can be asked to you directly and it can ask you that which of these approaches or which of these expressions can be used or which expression cannot be used so i have told you everything needed to find out the final dimension in such a case where elastic recovery is happening okay